What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Epic Handshake podcast, the podcast about epic people that deserve an epic handshake. You can check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as other podcast streaming services. And don't forget the YouTube element that is accompanying all of the audio here. You can actually see all of our beautiful faces. You can see what we're doing. You can see pretty much everything. So be sure to check that out and subscribe. Yeah. Today I have my friend Tyler and uh, we're, we've been friends for quite a bit now. Um, he is, as you've seen in a few of the other videos that, and, and podcast episodes slash videos that I've done, um, I tend to draw a little bit from our, my shooter group that I'm part of. And so he's part of that same group, but Tyler, do you want to introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? Yeah. So I'm Tyler Hansen. Um, I, uh, have a YouTube channel, um, EDC gear reviews. I've been doing YouTube for over five years. I'm not exactly sure how long, uh, I do a lot of gear reviews for everyday carry items like knives, guns, um, lights, anything really related to EDC. Um, I do a lot of other like preparation type videos too, like, like medical first aid, um, you know, prepping in general, like just stuff like that. Just yeah. yeah, stuff yeah. that I'm interested in as a hobby. And you said five years you had your channel, right? I think it's a little longer than that, but yeah. I've lost track. <laughs> yeah, all good, man. Yeah, so yeah, you can check out his channel. Uh, I'll leave that channel descri- or the uh, the URL in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Uh, it's a great channel. I pretty much draw a lot of my information from his channel uh, when I'm doing similar products. Usually if we we're, we're talking about a lot of we're since we're in the same group, we have a lot of the same interests, same uh, gear. And so when I buy something, he'll check it out. When he buys something, I'll check it out. And you're pretty big into knives too, right? Like you, you, you focus a lot on, on knives on your channel too, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's actually pretty interesting. It goes back and forth over the years. I would say that is the main focus, but, and I actually, when I started my channel, it wasn't for that. It was actually mm-hmm. more gun related stuff, but it used to be called back in the day, knives, guns, and gear. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. And I don't, don't even ask me why I changed it. I just, I, uh, after so many years, I just refreshed. That's probably name. taken now at this point, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually a lot of it, like I think why I transitioned more to knives was just because of YouTube, like the algorithms, the ownership by Google now, like, you know, just not very friendly to second amendment. So, mm. um, monetiz- you know what I mean? Like monetization yeah. Oh, yeah. of videos and stuff. So yeah. Like when was the, the sweet spot of, of monetization? Wasn't that like four years ago? Yeah. Like before Google, honestly, just before Google purchased YouTube, That's when true. YouTube was its own entity, it was a different, it was a different world back then. And it was, yeah, way better monetization. And, and at that, and that time my channel was really, like, way smaller, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and it, I would say it was better back then than it is now, and it was a much smaller channel. So yeah, no kidding. Um, so that's kind of why I went towards knives um, because it's not as they don't demonetize knife videos. Well, they actually, Yet. funny enough, have started to. No. Yeah, I know. There's a big YouTuber I follow and th- that I've known for a while named Metal Complex, and he had his channel demonetized for a short time. Um, I know like talents I did for a bit, you know, mm-hmm. and he does some nice, and it, he has, he does a lot of content like gun related too. So it could have been related to that, but it's, it's just really hard to tell anymore. Like YouTube just kind of does what they want when they want to. And yeah, there's no rhyme or reason. That's the same with Instagram. <laughs> same with Facebook. You're going to see a recurring theme on this podcast, like how upset we are <laughs> about just these, the algorithms and the mon- demonetization of content, suppression of free speech. A lot of people would argue that it's not free speech, but I, I digress. I'm not going to get into that. But, but yeah, we're seeing a lot of that. I mean, I didn't realize that knife content was was being suppressed as, or it's starting to. It's starting to look like what gun content used to look like. It is, yeah. It, didn't, it was never in the past, and now yeah. it's you're starting to see that. I mean, I when I upload a video, it, it's rare that a knife content, like knife content, gets demonetized. Um, but it does happen um, from right. time to time. And I usually, so like you said, there's just a lot of inconsistency there. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I'll do a holster review from my YouTube and it'll be immediately demonetized. Like as soon as I upload it and I'll put a request in and they'll say, okay, you're fine. And they, yeah. and they re-enable ads. <laughs> and then I do the same, I do another holster video, completely different company. And they like, nope, completely <laughs> it doesn't meet our guidelines. And I'm like, there's no consistency behind it. It's very random. And yeah. 
So yeah, I've kind of let my channel fall by the wayside a little bit just because I've had other priorities. Obviously, you see me working on this this podcast right now, but yeah, like out of the five gun videos that I have on my channel. So I've got a Sig Sauer, or like a Sig Legion. I've got two staccato videos, uh, Chris Vector, and then an MPX video. Uh, out of those five, two of them are monetized. And the other three I appealed because they're like, oh, and you know, it doesn't follow our guidelines because of the sale of firearms and, or endorsing a company or something like that. Even yeah. though I didn't make no mention of that, I just said where I got it from. They they didn't like that, and so that uh, yeah that, that was that was really sucky when that happened. And it, even with the two that are, are monetized, they're two different guns. So let's take the staccato ones for example. Like I have the staccato P, the staccato C two. Basically the same gun, just different sizes. Yeah. Completely, one's monetized, one's not yep. because and all the same content basically, but it's just they didn't. I don't know. I think they just have different people working on different things each day. I don't know. Yeah. I've I've always wondered that who's actually reviewing these and the ones that get approved and the ones don't. I'm like, it's literally the same content. Why would it, you know? Yeah. It's just inconsistent. So, I mean, I have started moving content. I'll do a little plug here. Um, yeah, you can do what you got to do, man. (laughs) Full30.com. Full30. You've probably heard of it. Um, after meeting the guys at Shuta this year, they've kind of revamped their platform and, uh, have some new, you know, people in charge, so to speak, in marketing. And um, they've back in the day, Full Thirty was a new thing. And it's actually been mm-hmm. around for quite a few years. But they were only allowing like certain channels on there, like big, big gun channels, like Military Arms and right. Mr. Guns and Gear, and just to, just to name a few. And Grand Thumb, you know, those kind of guys. People that um, could endorse it, yeah, right from the get go. And they wouldn't let like the smaller channels on. I was like, well, that's kind of crappy, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then years ago, I like, I. They said they opened it up. I applied for a channel name, and nothing really happened. Then, I, like I said, I ran to the guys at Shuta, and he's like, "Yes, absolutely." He's like, "We can even all pull all your content from YouTube over." So that was I've cool. I've actually done that. that. Yeah, and I, I've actually pulled all my videos over, and I have hundreds of videos. Oh yeah. So they they did like an API call or something, and pulled all this stuff over, and which can be expensive to do. I actually found out. Anyway, it's cool that they're doing that. It is cost, really, cost money. Yeah, because that was one of my hangups. I'm like, I have so many videos on there. So I can't move all my content over. Like, oh yeah, we can. I'm like, whoa, because I don't want to sit and manually upload hundreds of videos. Like, no. there's time for that. So they've they've uh, so all my same same channel name on full30.com, ATC Gear Reviews. Um, all my videos are up there now. I don't know if like the new ones I put up have been pulled over. Um, I haven't seen a lot of traction on that platform yet. Um, mm. So you know, I'm trying to drive some of my YouTube audience there because I know a lot of YouTube audience that's into guns and stuff. So they watch Full Thirty. But and I, the guy's name's escaping me. Of course, I'm horrible from remembering oh, names. Oh, it's all good. I am too. Um, he he basically said, "Look, we're trying to promote more than just guns too. Like we would love to have more EDC stuff. We'd love to have knife channels on there. And there's really, I don't you, think, is even just regular content like yeah. people doing vlogs and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I mean, they they want they want it to be a video platform, but I think people haven't grasped that yet because they're still trying to figure out. Oh, hey, should we migrate our gun content over? Let alone, yeah, treat it as a YouTube. I, and I think their one hang up too is they don't have an, um, a mobile app. And like right. if you think about YouTube, where do you watch YouTube? On your phone. Mostly on your phone, mm-hmm. right? And it's from your app. It's not, no one I don't think pulls up the mobile Utah or Utah, mobile YouTube browser. You know, I mean, I do a lot of YouTube on my yeah. my Mac too. And that's fine on Full30, it works great as far as a web platform. It's also very easy to upload content to, like very easy. Um, they do, and they obviously don't have monetization issues with gun content because it's a fun it's a it's a, f- a friendly platform for that so mm-hmm. hopefully that takes off more i would love for that to happen because then that can yeah. be done yeah, <laughs> i mean YouTube, but... obviously you're probably going to keep con- you're going to continue making videos on youtube right i mean yeah i'm I mean, doing cause, both because i because I, I like what I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and i've heard a lot of other youtubers say you know their plans especially if, if their channel is being suppressed that leaving a platform does not help that help you you know like mm-hmm. there's a lot of people migrating whole like it's good to diversify i mm-hmm. think my thing is like i want to have my videos here 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 and here yeah you know instead of just here like i i want there to be other platforms besides youtube because it makes it so that more your content gets out to more people that information is disseminated better um but there's just some people just leaving cold turkey and 
I'm like, that's not, especially if we're trying to advocate for something yeah. uh, that, that gets, it, it, it's a double edged sword. It is. One. Yeah, totally. I hundred percent agree with that. And it, uh, I don't do YouTube full time. It's a yeah. hobby. I, you know, don't plan on making a ton of money off of it. I'd love to, that'd be awesome. Right. If you could quit your day job and yeah. create content full time, that would be awesome. But you know, it's, hasn't been that reality for me. So it's like, I've just kept it as a hobby mm-hmm. and you know, it's nice. It's, yeah. I, I, I enjoy doing it. It's, part of you know just having the, the the gear and you know doing the reviews is, is fun to me you know what i mean so yeah it's, it's just part of the hobby i think you you have to do this stuff because it's fun yeah you, know, you can't just do it with the mindset oh i'm gonna make money because it's not a fast thing i mean <laughs> how long did it take you to get fully monetized i mean how, how often first off how often were you making videos oh at first probably like I kind of hit it hard actually mm-hmm. at first because it just I got some response from some videos like I was kind of shocked by so I was like yeah. okay I'll keep making content you know that I think that comes with the territory like if you get views if you get comments if you you know start growing your subscriber base it's like it entices you to do more content you know and it's just okay well people are actually watching this they're interested it's motivating it's motivating yeah, yeah. it's so I don't but I think I got monetized like I don't remember having to wait back then. I think yeah. it was like not Instant. a big deal. You just, and they monetize any channel. I think like, before 2018, I think that's when I remember, like I just put a few videos under my like regular email address, G, like my Gmail account and my channel literally made like 10 cents in the first <laughs> six months. I yeah. don't know, but it was monetized. Yeah. I remember that. And then they transitioned over in 2018, I think. And then they're like, Oh, sorry, you need 4,000 watch hours. And a thousand subscribers. I'm like, okay, me and my 10 subscribers are going to yeah, not try anymore. They've definitely made it more difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though they don't lack money to pay anybody. No, definitely not. But, but who am I to say, who am I to, to tell a company to allot yeah. their money? Yeah. That is the argument that, you know, it is their platform. They can regulate it how they want to, mm-hmm. but yeah. that's a slippery slope as it is a slippery slope. as we know with all social media these days. You know what I mean? It's very, very much, you know, they seem like they can just turn people off when they want to. Oh yeah, and that doesn't seem right. But at the same, at the end of the day, it is their platform. So it's like there just needs to be options. There needs to oh, be yeah. alternative platforms, right? There needs to be an alternative to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter that's, you know, more friendly to that. You've kind of seen thing. the social dilemma, right? Like the that, movie? that that Netflix Netflix. Uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's a movie, a documentary. Yeah, I think I have. It sounds familiar. Yeah, it's basically like saying how social media has been unregulated. It gets all these people, all of these different developers from Google, Facebook, YouTube, pretty much anybody that's kind of helped with this algorithm, so to speak, you know, quote unquote algorithm. They basically speak out against it. They say, hey, this is this was meant to show you what you like and love and show you what you hate and dislike in a, in a way that you make it makes you hate it and dislike it more. It's interesting. It's super, that's, I mean the, the algorithm is designed to show you what you don't like in a way that's pleasing to you. Does that make sense? Where, yeah. where it's like you, you despise it. And so that's, what's creating that division. And so it's most, one of the, social media is one of the most unregulated, uh, I guess entities in the world in history. And so, unless it's you know, unless it's against their narrative, then yeah, no kidding. <laughs> ask, oops, bump the mic. No, you, ask yeah. President Trump, right? You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, Fake news. Yeah, getting bumped off Twitter and all these other social media platforms. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely content is is changed quite a bit. You know, not mm-hmm. my level of content, not what I do. It's the same. It's right. been for years, and you know, I don't plan on changing it to like a necessarily adapt to what they want me to do i'm mm-hmm. just gonna keep doing what i'm doing you know what i mean and if eventually they demonetize my entire channel like to me it's not the end of the world you know it's a hobby mm-hmm. so it's not it would be sucky but you know hopefully there's alternative platforms that yeah. like full 30 that will help you know sure yeah and you know i even if i don't think they'll fully demonetize every gun channel because there's some big heavy hitters out there that'll definitely speak out you know and that'll definitely say something you know like you have i don't know there's people that have been threatened lawsuits i don't know how you know what that what's come of that i'd like to be involved with knowing about this stuff Mm -hmm. potentially but i don't know nothing's really it hasn't hit the fan yet you know as as far as like youtube hasn't 
fully come out and, and just hit everybody down luckily but i mean like you said with talent i mean if, if if you've been following him i mean his channel's been demonetized like four times and he's appealed all four times and got it back but it's been months and you know it's i can it's, only i can only imagine because he, he makes really good content i mean he's probably one of my favorite youtube personality people and oh yeah and uh it, it would be demotivating you know if you have five hundred thousand subscribers and none of them can see your videos anymore or none of them well, he, that's a source of income now, right? Yeah, like he put his, I think so. I think not just not just from YouTube. I think it, he had like a bunch of sponsored brand deals and stuff like that. But yeah. YouTube is a nice little chunk for sure. I'm sure it is, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it was weird timing because he had kind of stopped making gun-related videos and it was doing mm -hmm. all his vlogs on his traveling with the yeah. sat band, you know? And like yeah. that's very popular on YouTube. Yeah. There's like tons of channels on van life. And mm -hmm. so I was like, you had to monetize for what? Like... <laughs> For yeah. that, like that's very common, yeah. you know. Like, I mean, he still has the Sunday Gun Day channel. Yeah, that's true, but it's not monetized, and you know, he. Yeah. I think that would be demotivating to me. I wouldn't make videos at that point. He still makes them. I don't know. Yeah, it, that that hurts me just to see that. And, and you know, then you get other channels like people he's associated with, like QVO Tactical, mm -hmm. or like Tier One Concealed. You know, other he's not associated with those ones, but uh, with Tier One, but you see those and they're putting out full auto videos and you know com gun comparisons and they're still monetized it's crazy like it's just inconsistent yeah it's super inconsistent and they're i don't know how big their channels are i have no idea yeah. off of my head but i know like when that when that knife channel i mentioned got demonetized it's when he kind of hit a certain threshold right i think he was up to like 50k subscribers yeah or something, something like that something like that and it's like before that it was untouched and then all of a sudden boom and he you started seeing that a little bit like when i think when the channel gets enough views and um traction that maybe they're more concerned about it's it than smaller it's, ones. yeah it's spike yeah. it's it, it alerts them or something you know mm -hmm. so i wonder if it has to hit a certain threshold for them to be like oh wait this is a problem it's disseminating this information a lot quicker than smaller channels we should shut well, them down and he's not even the biggest knife channel there's a, no, uh, there's a bunch of bigger ones and it's like they have been demonetized so it just doesn't make sense it's like like yeah. i said it's just so inconsistent. Like that's it the is. frustrating thing is the content creator on there. It's like, you're like, I have no idea if this video I put up is going mm -hmm. to be monetized or not, or if I'm gonna have to fight it, it might get reversed. And uh, you know, you create mm -hmm. content. It's not yeah. like it's, it's time, you know, it's, 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 it's not our day job. It's like a hobby, but it's still a lot of time invested. And it's pretty frustrating when you invest that time and effort and then it's just demonetize and, and you don't even know who's seen it like right, you, right. and I, I have noticed like a huge decrease in views oh yeah and I, my, like i said my channel is not demonetized but i think that's just algorithms so, like yeah. i just think they've really found a way to to make it hard to find that content i've had people get unsubscribed from me that are like i don't know why i didn't unsubscribe oh, from yeah. you but like i need to resubscribe apparently yeah, and and I, actually there's very few times where i actually like go to someone's channel look for the subscribe button and unsubscribe. Like it's, I think that's the bulk of us. I mean, we don't, there's particular, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of hard <laughs> you know, to find that, go back to that, button, like to find the time, go to that button. Boom. You got to really, that some, that person had to do something really to, yeah. Yeah. To make you mad to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't do that often. And so I, I found myself unsubscribed to certain channels and I'm like, I love this channel. Why would I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't do that. And so, yeah, no, I, I totally get that. It's unfortunate, but um, so to kind of go back to your, your channel a little bit. So what is, what is your process for creating videos? I mean, I, I, I like the information that you have on your channel. And so like, do you just find something you like and then talk about it? Or do you like get random stuff occasionally and just talk about it? I, I don't know. You know, there, yeah. I mean, Both. typically like when it comes to certain things it's just a matter of what i'm kind of into at the time right right so i have this weird crossover i should say weird crossover but it's it's between knives and guns there's like it's almost mm -hmm. two separate hobbies right right even though every knife every gun guy i know has a knife and carries a knife on a daily basis i'm sure you've got some on your yeah i've got that microtech yeah that microtech you. you're <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, yeah so there is crossover in the hobbies but the like passion like i don't want to say the passion level that's kind of a weird way to say it yeah that works the interest level is a little different like gun guys are like i can't believe that you spent 
this much money on a knife when my thirty dollar Kershaw will cut some. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they get really but elitist I would about. rather spend that six hundred. You know, I mean, that's what is this a Microtech OTF is about two hundred and some. Let's say two fifty. Yeah, that's, sure. I'm spitballing there. I didn't spend that much though. <laughs> <laughs> but but really, if you were to go buy one from a dealer, it's probably going to cost that, right? Right. And people are like, well, that's that's really expensive. That's I'll just save that and you know get a gun for a little bit more money and right. So there's there's a, a crossover in my channel where I have like really dedicated knife guys that are strictly there for knife content. I have other guys that are there for gun content. I have other that are, and then there's the crossover people that are like me and you that are like interested in both. So it's like, mm-hmm. why can't that coexist together? Right. And it was interesting when I did my recent video on my night vision. Mm-hmm. I sold a ton of knives. I sold a, like a big part of my collection. I had some really nice pieces. But I was really wanting to get some night vision. Right. And I'm like, how am I going to fund this? And I'm like, well, here's how I can fund it. <laughs> how does anybody fund this? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And so I sold a bunch of knives and I bought night vision goggles. Mm-hmm. And I made a video like, hey, this is what I sold my knives for. And people were like, that's so dumb. And it was just, it was, it was so, the comment section still is very mixed. It's like, that's so cool. I've always wanted to get a night vision versus what the heck are you going to do with that? You're going to go LARP with your friends in the woods. You know, people That's being exactly told jerks what we're gonna about do. it. That's exactly, That's exactly what we're, we're going to LARP and it's awesome. all the time just for you. For Dakota Myers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but because we can, right? Like, hey, you know what? It's my, it's my disposable income. And if I want to spin mm-hmm. out freaking night vision goggles and they're freaking rad. You are free to do so. And it's so fun yeah. and it makes me happy. Then who freaking cares? Like what you spend your money on, right? Right. But it, it's interesting as like those guys almost took offense that I sold knives to buy that. Whereas other people were like, that is so cool. I've always wanted to get into that. Mm-hmm. You know, tell me more about your setup. Tell me more about this, this, and that. So there's just like this weird mixed bag of content, you know, and I'm like, I go back and forth and I go back and forth on my disposable income and where it goes. If it goes to knives, it goes to guns, right? Right. right. Lately, it's been, it's more, you know, I just, well, I played for that suppressor like, you know, eight oh, months ago. That's true. But I just picked up a new can from, you know, out of jail. I got the night vision stuff. I bought the Walther PDP, mm-hmm. you know, like I, good stuff. All my stuff really has been on guns and that's, it goes back and forth for me. It's like, and then I'll get with having the knives again and it's just a back and forth. So the content for me is really not consistent. It's like whatever I'm into at the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like something I have, I haven't done in a long time is carry the same knife for like a week straight. And I know that sounds <laughs> stupid to a lot of people cause I'm like, no, I, I, I have so many to pick from. I just like rotate them every day, right? Yeah, it's just like any collection, man. You, you you want to, you get them because you want to use them, but you can't yeah. use them all at once. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so you just change it up every day. Well, lately I got this knife like over a week ago. It's the Kaiser Sheepdog. Um, mm-hmm. it's oh, the, the new the full cle- size. The cleaver looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's got oh, the yeah. cleaver style blade. And But anyway, I got it like a month or a week ago and I haven't, mm-hmm. hasn't, I haven't had a desire to carry anything else. And it's, and it's a good knife. It's not like, it's it's not even an expensive knife. It's no. like ninety bucks. No, it does the job. Can I see I, it? Yeah, sure. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow. Yeah. If you're if you're not watching on YouTube, you're you're missing out. Is it just a flipper? It's a thumb hole opener. Oh, yeah. yeah. So kind of like oh, the point. spidey flick is the way I open it. I don't know Dude. if you're familiar with that or oh, not. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. I, I've, it. I've never been like. It's good. funny to watch people do this. There needs to be yeah. like a tutorial how to middle finger. No, I'm knife. just like because a lot of knife guys that aren't like you know weighing yeah. the knives, they struggle with that. It's funny. Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually not a knife person. Like yeah. I love knives. I'm just not a connoisseur. Yeah. And exactly. So, it's, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people get intimidated by by knives because I think in when you jump into that world and you like say something wrong, I I've been like victim of this people jump all over you like that's not a liner lock that's a this lock or that's a <laughs> that's not that steel is crappy like what is that like where'd you get that did you get that up there's a lot of elitism yes. yeah yeah and i'm like but it's the same way in guns though yeah, yeah it's yeah. true it's the same with guns it, it, it can be intimidating like people you like oh hey man i just bought bought my high point <laughs> wait you bought what hey raise your hand if you've owned a high point i have a couple of them yeah for like way, a week yeah way back in the day when i first was into guns for sure because it was like hundred bucks yeah, like a hundred a yeet cannon i think leaf mentioned that in his episode about the uh or hasn't aired yet but uh you'll see in that he, he talks a little bit about that it's kind of funny yeah it's the same idea though there is elitism in any mm-hmm. hobby and it's unfortunate yeah. like yeah. i remember reading i just wrote a post the other day on facebook and one of the knife groups i'm part of on facebook and it was like look 
we're we're trying to be inviting to new people into the hobby don't be a dick you know yeah, don't no, be a jerk to people like yeah, it's true if they have questions don't just jump down there sort of like are you an idiot like well maybe they just bought their first knife like maybe you know what i mean like, like just be cool like <laughs> just, yeah just be a nice person it's the same with guns like we want so you think about second amendment and it does apply to knives like people don't oh, think yeah. of it that way no but it does like there's there's countries you can't carry a knife like this 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 yeah a lot of states Microtech. you can't carry an otf yeah, yeah. like when i bought it the lady was like oh yeah just uh keep in mind um just be aware of where you take that uh yeah i know and she's like yeah i didn't know that they, they were illegal in a lot of states like you can't take it to california you can't take it to to new york new jersey i'm mm-hmm. like yeah that's true she's yeah. like it's incredible it's crazy but i don't i don't go to the many of those states well i guess i go to california yeah. pretty often but. yeah you know what I mean? Because of those reasons, though. But but there there is a lot of crossover for yeah. our rights and such into and knife. There's a whole knife rights thing that mm-hmm. there's certain legislation. Like Rick Hinder is a big um, knife maker. It's been around yeah. a long time. A lot of people have heard of him. He was an EMT. Design, started designing knives. Um, his knives are amazing. They're they're a little on the expensive side for yeah. most people. But they're all made in the USA. And he's he's an awesome guy. I met him in person. I actually bought his knife out of his pocket, which was pretty awesome. Um, cool. He sold me his personal knife, which is cool. But he's a big knife rights advocate advocate in Ohio, I believe, is where he lives. And a lot of states just have silly laws like that. Like, why can't I carry this out the front? What? what? Like, yeah. uh, and there's certain blade restrictions. You can't carry a knife over three inches or under. Like, a lot of countries, like in the UK, they can't even carry a locking knife. It has to be a slip joint. Really? Yeah. I mean, look at the UK though. Like, uh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's yeah, like that people are getting attacked. That's where the US but, is starting to head. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Oh yeah. Um, so there's there's some crossover uh, for the Second Amendment and stuff, but it, you know the elite go back to the topic of elitism. It's the same way with guns. Mm-hmm. Like look at this whole conversation we've had about it. You know, we won't get into the names and such, but on Instagram about a certain guy that's just advocating you know one brand of gun over everything else and everything else is oh. superior and and that and that's just silly. Glock like perfection. Yeah. And hey. I own I, two Glocks. I love Glocks. I carry a Glock 48 MOS on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. I have a, a 19X that I love. But I also enjoy a lot of other brands, that I, and I can see the quality in all those other brands. And I don't. I think you have to shoot those guns to like pass judgment and like, hey, that's, you know. Yeah. And uh, you, more than once, too. Yeah. You know, and multiple, I don't know. It, they're all configured differently. That's the thing about firearms that I really like is that they can be configured to how you shoot. You know, they can look however you want. Who cares? You know, like... I don't know. People, like you said, get elitist about the dumbest things, and then mm-hmm. it causes more harm than it does good. Yeah, especially new. Especially new. So back to my what I was trying to make the point here, where it really was like we're trying to advocate for Second Amendment for more people to carry, for more people to get into guns. You know, you know that's one of the things our group is passionate about, right? Mm-hmm. Like especially Leaf and you know at the Utah, we volunteer for the Utah Firearms Association, trying to. It's a, you know, it's a grassroots organization just basically trying to help support, mm-hmm. you know, gun laws. And, like, if our legislators are trying to pass something that's, you know, against the Second Amendment, we, we get involved, right? And so we're kind of passionate about that, and we're passionate about bringing new shooters into the sport. Yeah. I mean, look at our, our Brazilian friends. Well, where were we? We were talking about... Uh... Uh, the Brazilians. Brazilians. So, yeah. yeah, to give you guys some background on that. So one of the guys in our group... He is married to a Brazilian. He, I believe he served his LDS mission. Yes, he, I know for a fact. I don't believe. He, I know for a fact he served an LDS mission in Brazil. And so he's plugged in with a lot of Brazilians uh, in, in his life. And, and so what he's been doing is he's been inviting them out. First off, he, he makes it pretty vocal that he's into firearms and Second Amendment uh, related things. And he invites them out to to shoot um actually they kind of initiate the conversation with him it's not even oh hey let's let's go no it's he it's done the right way and they approach him and he teaches that they're like little sponges and the best people ever and you'd think like brazilians they come to the united states they'd be anti-gun but really that's not the case i mean these these guys have really embraced the the right to defend themselves and they want that and they've yearned for it. And so we've had a few range days with them and they've just been so good about just wanting to learn, being humble about it. And, you know, we luckily we have some really solid guys in our group that teach really well, that explain things really well. And so that's kind of been the thing. And, but yeah, just to back to your point, 
the, I mean, having people like that advocate for what the, a lot of what seems like the whole country is advocating against. It's just, it's almost like a, like a slap in their face to their narrative, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And it's just, it is interesting. Like, um, the, you know, we're talking about elitism. Like if we were elitists and we would be like, I don't know. I'm not going to teach you how to shoot. Go get your own gun. And yeah. do, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to let you shoot my gun. I'm not going to let no. you do these things. And we have that exact opposite attitude. Um, I really enjoy teaching new shooters. I, I do it a lot for handgun, uh, especially with females. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, I want to empower women to carry. And sometimes they're just very, um, what's the word? Not shy. Apprehensive. Apprehensive. Yeah. They're almost afraid. They just yeah. don't know. Yeah. And I think it takes them going out and shooting a gun for the first time mm-hmm. and realizing, wow, it's not as scary as I thought it was going to be, you know, yeah. and it's oh, not yeah. going to knock me on my back. And, mm-hmm. and then they get excited about it. Yeah. And I really enjoy that. And I, I do it frequently as just as a service. Like I don't charge. I'm just no. like, Hey, you bring the ammo you can shoot my guns and I'll teach you, you know? And I really enjoy that. And so that was the same That's way good. when we did the rifle training, um, there was a few of us out there, um, just teaching them the basics of the AR-15, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm like, that is the kind of stuff that gets me excited. I really enjoy it. If I could do that for a living, 100%. Like, if I could run a train, you know, program kind of like a Fieldcraft Survival does or, you know what I mean, something like that, yeah, sure. I'd be all over that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that's an, an, uh, another topic altogether. Is yeah, for sure. That, like, you know, that the... A little bit of elitism there on that end of things, and I'm not talking about them specifically at all. No, I don't think they have that, but there is some of that um, between, like you know, your regular shooters like us, like a like a Lucas from T Rex Arms, you know, not mm-hmm. a military yeah, background, pe- right? Yeah, people that aren't, you know, tactical yeah. by aren't veterans. Yeah, veterans. Yeah, or much. Leo, right? Exactly. Um, there's kind of that division among us right now. When I say us, I'm talking about the two A community, right? Mm-hmm. And it's silly because it's like. You, we should. They should be advocating for citizens to be prepared to train, to you know. When you get a concealed carry permit, like you have a duty, right? Like one of the things when you buy something from T Rex, have you ever read that on their website? No, I they have like a little box you check, right? Acknowledge terms and conditions, and and uh, I don't know what it says exactly. I can pull up my phone, but I'll look it up. Yeah, it's um, it's basically saying that you're like a green to seek training. To be proficient with your gun, I think, and they give you a discount when you buy a holster if oh, you yeah. check that yeah. box. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's really cool because they're advocating for people to get training to, um, you know what I mean, just to yeah. like take to not just get a gun and go to the range and plink with it. They're they're saying, hey, get some real training, go take a class, know how to use that gun in a defensive situation. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna carry it, it's kind of an obligation, you know. And I always tell people when they're asking about guns and stuff, I'm like, well, I'd be glad to help you pick something out, but I think the, yeah. you really need to learn the basics of the firearm safety. Yeah, getting a little feedback yeah. from, the, from the phone. It's, <laughs> it's not like good. asteroids. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or like one of those ladies games, like the feedback, that was funny. Yeah, um, Metroid. Yeah, but, you know, they need that training. They need some basic level, you know, of understanding that <laughs> firearm safety. Yeah. And that was a theme that I actually talked about with Leaf and I, I think Tanner um, previous episodes, uh, they, I mean, I, I usually tell people, I'm like, if you're going to buy anything, like if, even if it's a Toyota Tacoma or even if it's a, you know, a, a, a knife of some kind, or you're buying something very special, I guess, specialized, learn how to use it. You know, like when I say like, for example, a Tacoma, I mean, there's so many ins and outs with a Tacoma. There's so many ways you can modify it learn about that before you just buy it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a really nice gun, get a thousand dollars of training to Mm -hmm. back that up. Yeah. You know, cause like there's so many people like, first off it keeps ranges clean. Cause I mean, if you're going out to the range just to shoot trash, you're not doing it. You're wasting your money. You know what I mean? So like we've all done it. Like, (laughs) yeah, we've all done it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, but I think the real, we realized that it was a mistake to do that. You know, I I mean, it's fun. Yeah, don't get me wrong. But I mean, I think with our group, we've just found that having a purpose when we go to the range is more fulfilling. Absolutely. As opposed to like just getting and shooting into trash, getting done 30 minutes later and like, okay, let's go get something to eat. It's also just a, like a way waste of ammo to do that. Yeah, especially now. Yeah, these days and the ammo shortages and how expensive ammo is. 
you got to make your rounds count and you know these there's so much good content out there i'm on train like and when you said like get a thousand dollars worth of train i was thinking about this like that or i'll advocate for yes. find a like-minded group of individuals like us oh yeah true. and our group of mm. guys i mean we how many we have like oh at least 25 yeah at least, at least like at least. There's, there's other people out there there's something to be learned from everyone mm-hmm. you know like i just shot with some new shooters just the other night that i hadn't shot with before and i learned a lot from those guys they were and they get a lot of their content information from youtube and you know certain things and it's just different drills and just different ways to to shoot and to push yourself and just to learn from other people is super valuable so yeah if you if you i do 100 percent advocate for taking a class like from a professional like i really do but i think there's a lot of and and there's that caveat make sure you do your research on the on the Mm -hmm. instructor Mm -hmm. right we've all seen you know in in a way they they need to have credentials but it doesn't always have to be the traditional ones yes doesn't just because they're a veteran doesn't mean or they're nra certified yeah Yeah. doesn't mean that they're you know necessarily a good choice do some research on that person find out who's taking classes you know look at reviews there's mm-hmm. reviews out there like yelp and you know i'm not necessarily yelp for <laughs> firearms but for sure but there is you know there's reviews out there and get some information and then yeah take class but also you know which honestly i would argue could be more valuable is find a like like-minded group of individuals like us that have experience that are trained you know we, we've all received some sort of training in the past and we we advocate for learning new things and pushing our boundaries and and doing things in it. And I've, since I've started shooting with our group, I have become a way better shooter than I ever mm-hmm. was before. Right. Same. Because I used to, I used to be the guy that would buy shooting every gun trash. I wanted to. <laughs> Not Sorry. necessarily even that. Sorry. No, I did. I mean, everyone's done <laughs> I know, that. I know it's fine. I funny. used to take on my old Xbox and blow it up. You know, who hasn't done that, that redneck right, right. stuff. Right. But, um, you know, I, I, it's like a, a switch, like flipped in my mind. I used to go to the range and shoot paper. Right. Mm-hmm. And just go through 100 rounds and just dial in. And I do a little bit of practice with my pistol, you know, but, like, nothing like I do now. Nothing like with movement, getting off the X, you know, certain drills we do. Like, we did a drill the other night where we started laying on our back. Yeah. And we had to engage a target right in front of us from that position. From reverse the holster. prone, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> just laying on your back and yeah. just, you know, shooting up onto a target, then getting up, grabbing a rifle, sprinting 50 yards, getting under, getting behind cover, yeah. and engaging a few targets. And it sounds like LARPing, and it is. For sure. <laughs> I hate that word, actually. I really me, do. Me too. But when I think I, of LARPing, I, I think about of... nerds in the park doing Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, the, you're the <laughs> third like... person that's talked about that on this <laughs> podcast. Like, Everybody mentions like people. You see the people playing Quidditch in the in the park, yeah. and they have like broomsticks. Or uh, I've seen it when I was at in college. I saw um, people with like uh, PVC pipe as their brooms, yeah. just squeezing it in between their legs. I'm like, or okay, I know a guy that Quidditch. literally does this for he goes to like medieval festivals, yeah, and he and he'll straight up call it LARPing because it is, and which he, looks really they fun. They fight by the way. like with swords and stuff. And yeah, you know, they're not sharp. And, no, no, they're like foam swords. Sometimes it's like they're almost reenacting something, and that's cool. Yeah. Have your hobby and be passionate about it. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. This is obviously a lot more serious than that, though. There's, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is this is training for things that are, you know, hopefully we never have to do or use, but we are putting yeah. ourselves in a situation that we've got that training, you know, and it was, it was really interesting as we were going through these drills and, and one of the things we all talked about was the equipment we were using and how, speaking of gear reviews, right? Yeah, kind of yeah. coming full circle. A lot of people go out and just go buy a Surefire light because they heard Surefire is the best and they just went and bought this light, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Isaac, why she thought was like, dude, my, my Surefire doesn't throw at all like your guys' lights. I had my mod light oh, yeah. on my, my rifle and I can't remember what the other guy was using, but he was just super disappointed trying to engage a rifle target at 60 yards. He was right. having a hard time picking up the target. And he's like, I paid this much money for this piece of gear, you know? So it's like, look for those reviews on those kind of things. And, but obviously put your, your gear into practice, right? Yeah. Find what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. If you're going to trust your life to a, a firearm for self-defense, you need to know that that thing mm-hmm. can perform under stressful situations under different circumstances that you may never put right. in. I'm right. not talking about going to the shooting range, putting up a target, shooting 50 rounds. Hey, I got all my shots in the A zone. Well, great. But you were staying still and mm-hmm. nothing was happening to you. Like, you know, like adding that level of like movement of 
getting your heart rate up with that sprint, you know, oh, yeah. like shooting behind cover, just different things like that. That's what our group is about. Yeah. Right? We're, we're always trying to push ourselves to do physically, mentally, yeah, new yeah. things and just shoot differently. And, but what was really interesting is going back to some basics was muscle memory that we had, we developed yeah. But doing basics, like there was a few times where we had a malfunction and we just immediately cleared it and just moved on or didn't thought I had more rounds in my magazine than I did immediately just did a quick slide rock reload and didn't even think about it. And I was like muscle memory. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even, didn't even think wasn't planned. It. it wasn't yep. part of the drill. No, that's great. It just happened. And, but those are the kind of situations I'm like, I didn't think about it. I just fixed <laughs> the problem and moved on. And you get to that point in shooting. That's where you want to get. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can't get there without performing those basic tasks first. Exactly. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't like the guys with the, the Brazilians when we were teaching them, the base, we were doing basic, very basic drills, things that we would kind of find boring. Yeah. It's station, they were like stationary things and this you know, is fun. Yeah. And we're like, Hey, let's do a slide lock reload. Let's figure it. Let's do a one-on-one -on -one reload with you guys. And it was all new to them and just watching them try to manipulate the magazine <laughs> release and, and the slide lock, the, mm -hmm. the bolt catch was like the hardest thing, this, you know, yeah. oh, just yeah. for them to like, activate that and put the bolt in the battery and shoot again. Like that was like such a m mundane, easy thing for us. It's like just normal because of our muscle memory. Right. right. So you've got to do those basic things to get to that level. And then yeah. you, then you take those basic things and they become muscle memory. And when you get in that situation, you don't have to think about it. Anymore. Yeah. And then two people from, from that were there that day I've, that I've talked to, they said that it was a super humbling thing for them because you know, I said, I think they, uh, a couple of people were saying that they were like talking each other down or whatever, like, Oh, I'm a better shooter than you. I'm a better this and that. And, uh, when they started, when it came down to the wire, the people that were talking the most were not the best ones at all. I mean, I don't know if that was the case. I wasn't there, but yeah, it was the case. And it was funny because, um, Logan was like, let's put them in a competition. Mm -hmm. So we got out one of those Legion targets, that's, that's um, that has the different drills. Yeah. You know, I love those Legion targets oh, yeah. and this is not a plug for Legion targets, but if you guys, it totally is, it is a plug for Legion targets cause <laughs> that's our friend. Yeah. But, um, his the targets they sell are awesome because they make really good use of your range time They're oh, yeah. low round count drills, but they really push your limits and they're all by professional shooters like Joe Farrell and, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of guys. And anyway, so we put them in a competition and we timed them and that, you know, adding a shot timer. Adding a shot timer to shooting was a huge deal for me. I'd never oh, done that before. Oh, Putting yeah. yourself under that stress of a time and you're like, crap, I gotta be fast. Like I wanna be fast, I don't wanna be slow. And you know, but at the same time, just it's just pushing your envelope. Oh yeah. And so they got behind that shot timer and they were like, you know, that that pressure. And it was really interesting to see some of the guys like totally just like not sure what to do and kind of, you know, and made it's him, probably those guys talking a lot think. of smack. Yeah. And they really had to like perform under that that and that simple beep. Not a big deal. It could stress you out if you're not ready for it. Exactly. And it just that whole like, Great. well, I got to beat this guy's time of seven seconds to do this drill. I want to do it in five seconds, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like that competitive nature to yeah. it. And that makes it fun, you know? And it, it does push the envelope, you know? Um, so things like that, like you got to start basics like we were with them. And then we put them in a little bit of a competition and it really like weeded out like oh, yeah. a lot of guys, you know? Like, like Lucas, I'm not trying to like, I don't have some man crush on T-Rex arms or anything. No, <laughs> just no, so you guys no. know. But no, it's good I really like his training. But he says, he has a saying like, if you if you suck, you suck. It doesn't matter what equipment you're using, what you're doing. You got to get better as a shooter. All these guys were using borrowed rifles. They'd never used them before. Mm -hmm. They were just, it was none of their equipment. They hadn't set it up a certain way to know. and The nuances of the Yeah, and it's just like they were just there to learn and train. And, and like you said, it was humbling for them, you know? Yep. And I think humility is a huge thing. Like, I've actually had some guys that I've trained to that were not humble. Oh, I used to be in the air force. I've shot before. It's like, well, how often do you shoot when you're in the air force? You don't. Yeah. The, there's those guys that go through the service for five, six, seven, eight years, touch their pistol, maybe like a handful of times. And he even admitted that. He's like, I haven't shot this guy in a while. And I'm like, well, okay, so let's, let's do some shooting. I was teaching his son. Yeah. You know, he wanted me to give his son some instruction because he, I, maybe he just didn't think, you know, I haven't mm -hmm. shot in a long time. So let's get someone that does. And he, you know, was like trying to show him certain things. And I was like, I was correcting him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, let's know. Let's get the grip like this. Let's, you know, hold it like this. The reason why we do this to help me to get recoil, you know, like things like that. And he was not very responsive to that. Like it was almost like an ego thing. Like, well, this guy is telling you can't me, tell me what to do. Cause yeah. Where I think why I like teaching women is because mm. they don't have that. 
Yeah, they're they're they're, they're very sponges. humble. Or even like new any new or any shooter. New shooter, yeah. Yeah, they're just sponges. But 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 some of those some of those guys they were a little like cocky and stuff with those guys, sure. you know? and, and it, it is just good to put them in that humbling situation. Like, oh, okay, no, I don't know as much as I thought I did about guns, and I've never. You know, and, and they were, but you, like I said, majority of the guys were very much like, hey, I'm here to learn. This is so exciting yeah. and fun and teach us. And that's, yeah. th- that's why I like to go into us. Like I've taken a few training classes over the course of the, the past few years. And, and, you know, I, I don't go in saying like, I, I know the basic fundamentals, but I'm, I'm here to learn. If he does it a little differently, cool. I'm going to see how he does it and try it out. If it doesn't work for me, then I'm, you know, then I've found out that that does not work. But the fact that I, that people go in, you know, doing these training courses but they say oh yeah i'm a shooter already I, I can do this but why are you doing the class then if you're the expert you know like yeah you gotta like, be there to learn chill out you know you can always learn something or even that. even i guarantee mike glover has something to learn oh yeah you know i'm I, sure he'd admit that yeah he, he'll yeah. be the one of the first to admit that and yeah. you know it's just those people that don't that have been in a, you know a position of of you know military law enforcement you know they yeah they do a lot of training but they also not all of them see action, quote unquote action. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so like I had a buddy that was an air force mechanic and he touched his SIG, brought it out of the holster twice uh, in his four years. And I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, given he was in the air force, he was a mechanic, but I mean, even the guys that get deployed, they never touch it. Yeah. One of the guys that we were shooting with the Brazilians was in the Brazilian military. Mm-hmm. And he said they, train once a year Mm -hmm. (laughs) once a year once a year that's terrifying (laughs) like the year military is training once a year like but yeah yeah so earlier on i actually thought of a question that i wanted to to bring up to you so what there's there there's some actually i can't even remember the question now because it was like we've just gone on so many different topics but um why do we do this this stuff like what because for those that aren't into firearms or maybe on the fence about them or just straight up anti-gun i mean what would you say to those people that aren't necessarily quote unquote like-minded like us what would you tell them like why why we do the quote unquote larping um like what does that do for us if we're laying on our back shooting at a target what does that do for us you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah how no. would you answer that it's a fair question i think it goes back to the responsibility of carrying a firearm for self-defense. Like I think when you get a concealed carry handgun, Mm -hmm. there's something that happens to make that kind of switch in your mind. Mm -hmm. Like something, you know, when we were on the Instagram live the other day with leaf, we brought on a guy that was like, um, one of the other guys knew and he was, I think he's in California. He's very liberal and he was, he admitted, you know, and he was asking us a lot of questions. Like, why do you guys feel like you need to carry a gun every day? You know what Ooh, I mean? Yeah, he, he's asking the hard questions. And I was I like, think. man, like that's, you know, is it, you know, and there's this like false mentality, like I just, you're just wanting to be tough, you know, like you're, you know, it's, you're, or you're scared. He even like kind of positioned it and he wasn't trying to be disrespectful. No, he was asking he's questions like, you scared? people wonder. And um, Leaf had a story that he told and I'm not going to share it. Maybe he shared it on your podcast. I don't, I don't know. He did. You can share it. I mean. I don't remember all the details, yeah, so I'd hate to do that. But for sure. it was basically, he had an experience that sparked it in him that being able to defend himself. He was in a bad situation, outnumbered by a lot of guys, and he's getting kind of physical altercations frequently, and it's just, those can end very bad, right? Right. For me, and one of the other guys, I can't remember what what he said, but for me, it was road rage. Really? I had a guy, like, legit, like, want to kill me with his vehicle. And it was terrifying. Like, and I don't, I didn't go up my, I'm gonna go buy a gun because of this, no. But it put me in a situation like, what if I like had gotten out of the car and gotten an altercation with this guy? You know what I mean? Like, what if he was carrying it? Or what if, just lots, so many what ifs, right? Mm-hmm. And it started making me think, God, I really need to like do something with myself to gain some sort of proficiency in self-defense, whether that be like martial arts to, you know, learn how to yeah. hand to hand or if it was a firearm or and I'd always been into guns. This is before I was carrying, right? So I owned right. guns. I was shooting guns a lot. I just wasn't carrying a gun. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get out and go out and get my concealed carry permit and be able to carry a gun. And, and you know, not like I'm, like, looking for trouble. No. But if the situation arises. And, and also, the, at the same time, I had a young family, you know? And I had I had two, at least two of my kids at the time. Maybe all three of them. But sure. I had a young family, and I wanted, you know, you have that father mentality 
of protecting your family, right? That's right. like an in, intuitive thing that becomes, yeah, and instinctual is a better word, of being a father. And you want to protect them, you know? And so I wanted a way to do that responsibly, you know? And I can't think of a better way to do that than with a firearm. Mm-hmm. I just I yeah, don't it, know of any other way. It, it's better. It, it levels the... the it's force multiplier. Yeah, yes. Yes, it's a force multiplier, and it levels the playing field. Like, you get a girl, you know, college girl she's 19 20 years old she's walking alone in a parking garage by herself and three guys come up and you know try to do something yeah and then she pulls out a pistol that she's been trained to use Mm -hmm. that those three guys it's now three against two and it's the girl and the firearm you know at that point and her knowledge i'd say it's three against three at that point yeah you know and I, that's I think for me that's what it was. I mean, I, I I first off like I'd always been into firearms, but I think my my like I think I brought this up in another episode. But my my dad he didn't really talk about his firearms. I mean, the extent was just seeing his his revolver under his mattress. But I ended up doing it by myself and just getting into it myself because I had a lot of good influences in my life that promoted those ideas of, of self-defense and, and protecting those around me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but for me, it, it was, it was more gradual than it was just a singular event. Like I wanted to be able to say that I don't want, like when I have kids or when I have a wife, I don't want them to be statistics. And so I want to be able to learn and then impart that knowledge that I learn. Like, I don't want my daughter to, you know, something bad happened to her and her be helpless you know what i mean like just think i mean here in utah i mean just think we've we've had they've we've had a history with ted bundy you know what i mean you know i live in the same neighborhood he was caught in jeez (laughs) i didn't know that by the way um but not living here yeah (laughs) yeah he actually there's a house in centerville it's actually in bountiful but it's like right by the centerville border yeah where he um, actually killed that girl that, and she, he adopted yeah. a girl from Viewmont High School, which is down the street from here. Yep, yep. And that's where he killed her in that house, and it's still there. That house is still there. Yep, yep. yep. And it's like a, it was on Ghost Ghost, ghost Tours Hunters or something like that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah, there's like I've supposedly haunted now. And yeah, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, and that that brings up another point. Like, I also like kind of used to live in this idea that like the bad things don't happen in Utah. Like that we oh, live in yeah. this bubble, you know, that we because I was kind of raised in this bubble, right? Yeah. Like. And then I come to the realization as an adult, like bad things happen everywhere. I think living outside of Utah for a while taught me that, right? For and sure. you know, it just that anything can happen at any time, and I want to be prepared for that situation mm-hmm. if it, if it arises. And it's not it it evolved from that was an issue I did it right, protect myself and my family. It, it's now evolved to something bigger than that, like protecting more than protecting innocent people. Not just me. I'm not like, hey, I'm not going to be out some hero and yeah. look for trouble. But, no. you know, if the situation arise where I had to use my concealed carry firearm to protect other innocent people, I would do it. It's a mindset. Mm-hmm. When you take that course, and it's a very minimal course for most states. It's yeah. like four hours. And But one of the things they talk about is a mindset and being aware of your surroundings. And you start thinking, when you carry a firearm everything is different like you you approach situations differently you actually i feel and i was trying to we were trying to like kind of convey this to this guy in california mm-hmm. that you're not looking for trouble you're trying to avoid trouble because of what you carry you don't want to like you know right. you don't, it's you're a not last looking. resort it's not the first one yeah you're not going out looking for a fight and trying to equalize that fight not at all you're the exact opposite of that where you're really like more cognizant of your surroundings you're trying to avoid conflict avoid situations not put yourself or your family in those situations. Be yeah. smart about things. Think that you don't think about. You maybe not thought about before. That it's a mindset. It's more than just a firearm. Yeah, like I think it's a mindset. You're thinking too. about de-escalation as opposed yeah. to oh, I'm going to pull out my gun and, and shoot this person. Yeah. No, that's not. I mean, in every training class that I've ever been in, they're like, you shouldn't touch your gun until it is. You know, if you have not, if you've done everything you can to de-escalate the situation, kill kindness with kindness type, or you yeah. know, uh, you know use kindness to, to do that. If that doesn't work, you know, there's, there's stages. And I think though there's a lot of people, I'd love to take another class to kind of figure out how to de- deescalate if mm-hmm. I'm in a situation like that. Like if somebody's, you know, for in, in your case with the road rage, I mean, I want to know how to deescalate that. If say we pull up to the stoplight guy gets out of his car and comes up to mine. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. You know, you know I, I, 
you know, I, I have some basic knowledge of how to do that, but I mean, I, I'd love to see a breakdown in just different scenarios and see if there's underlying principles that can be taught. And, you know, maybe that's something to look into. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's, it, there's just a lot of responsibility that comes with firearm ownership. And, yeah. and I think people in and out of the gun industry don't see that sometimes a lot of the times. And it's, and it's, it's frustrating because it's like with anything else. I mean, you can, you know, be pro something, but you may not know all the reasons why you're pro that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. That makes sense. It does. No, you think about, (laughs) I think a lot of people today, especially have a hard time thinking critically and thinking for themselves. And they just, why do you believe this is, or why do you support this political party or why do you do this or why do you support this person? Or why do you think Mm -hmm. these things? Because the media told me, (laughs) Yeah. like they really don't have an answer. Like, I don't know, you know? And like, I don't really know why I sit back and think, why do I think that? You know, like it's, and you know, I think that's just an issue with society. Yeah. I think I like those, those videos of like people visiting college campuses and asking them like, so they read off quotes from certain candidates or certain people and they're like, who said that? And they don't know, you know, and it's interesting to just, I don't mean to like say no to shut them up, but I, I, I definitely think it's very eye opening and humbling experience when you're asked a question, you don't know how to answer it, especially if it has to do with something you're quote unquote passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know those are, those are entertaining videos when you see yeah, the, that but stuff, but it just goes to show how uninformed a lot of us choose to be. Yeah. And exactly. we just go with the flow as opposed to doing our research. Yeah. And it also shows like that perception on the other side of things like, like going so going back to that like guy we had on the pod or the live, he kind of had this idea in our minds that we carried because we were trying to be a tough guy and then we were like you know trying to have something to prove or yeah and uh, he's like it was just, why do you feel like you need have why do you have the need like why do you feel the need and just to explain it to him mm-hmm. it just all it does is it re re justifies I don't know if that's the right terminology but it just re reconf- confirms to me why I do it. Right. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is why and there's people that think that's never going to happen to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I pray that it doesn't. Yeah. And I, I do not wish harm upon anybody, you know, that disagree with me, but I, I do, you know, you, you I don't know if you've seen the video of the guy that you know, it, I think it's floating around social media right now of this guy that shows up to this lady's door. It's in Las Vegas. I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Good topic. <laughs> yeah. And he shows up to her door. He's she, I don't think she's home. Right. Or her husband was home. Or no, they, they were both home. And they were just heard him knocking and he was like knocking on the door and yeah. like, he's like, he was talking to himself. He obviously wasn't in his right mind, oh, no. but then like he, he, it start he starts getting frustrated that nobody's answering the door. And then he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to break in. I'm going to break in and I'm going to rape the girl and, and leave and, and kill her and rape her and kill her. And he keeps repeating that. And I'm like, okay uh and he, obviously he's still on the loose and so yeah scary so the, I, scary. more details of, that i've learned i thought it was yeah. just a girl at home and she was just obviously not opening the door because he legit i didn't really realize till today he said i'm looking for the woman that live, girl lives here i'm going to rape and kill her and i'm like oh yeah well let me open the door sure like what like but apparently she was hiding somewhere and the husband or um boyfriend or whoever he was yeah was also kind of hiding and was on the phone with the police and like then you know the whole thing was recorded on the ring kind of thing and he was yeah like talking to this door no one's responding like he was obviously not mentally there like there was something wrong with this guy and that is a whole topic and point right there is that same with this guy with the road rage for me he was something was off like why would you get so mad i don't even know i like still to this day don't know what i did to make him so mad i didn't cut him off i didn't like Try to race him or anything? I know. I don't even know what it was. Like, I have to this day no idea why this guy was so furiously mad at me that he wanted, he literally swerved his vehicle at mine. Like, he was crazy. And that's the problem is like, there's mentally ill, like, I don't call them crazy people. We'll just call them mentally ill people yeah, like this sure. guy with a knife that are so dangerous, mm-hmm. right? And you can't necessarily talk to, about your topic of de escalation. Can you reason with that guy? He's yeah. at your door saying, let me in. I'm going to murder and rape someone. Yeah. And you're like, bro, like you can't, he's not in his right mind. You're not no, going to reason with that yeah. guy. So, and he's super dangerous. That's why you have that force multiplier. That's why you have that like equalizer. Right. And he was, he was armed. He had a weapon. 
Yeah. If, I'm telling you right now, if the guy comes to my door and he's armed with a weapon and comes to my door and says those things, I don't know like how that's going to end. I'm going to make sure he falls into my house. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like you're not going to open the door, but yeah, for sure. like if he tried to force entry, you know, but I'm definitely calling the cops. But, you know, at that at that time, too, you wonder, like, if if, if he had a firearm and he said, look, I've got a gun. Leave my house. That guy's going to be like, whoa, I'm out of here. I don't want trouble. That guy probably not because he was not yeah. mentally there. Yeah, but and they still haven't found the guy, too. That's scary. You know, and he's the fact the that, yeah, he's he's probably watching other people and, you know. And there's, forbid he doesn't and there's do that. Anything. Like the police were on the, the line with him, right? Mm-hmm. But did did they ever show up? If I, so he was able to get away. Not for another 30 minutes so or so. So there's that whole scene with the cops that that's where everyone says, we'll just call the police. Well, it takes them a long time sometimes you're, to get somewhere. Yeah, you're your first responder. Yeah. You're your own first responder. And I think that it's a that's part of the mentality, right? It's not just with, like it's being a first responder in general, right? It's not just with the firearms. It's with like medical training, like applying first aid to someone we all carry medical kits like in our, in our range i i have medical kits everywhere and i've received some training in the past i need to update my train we're talking about taking another class yeah. um but just knowing basic first aid and being that first responder it's the same it's the same mentality as you're just wanting to help someone yeah. in a bad situation and 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 a gun can save lives we've mm-hmm. seen it how many 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 times nobody, a gun nobody is, talks about that though no they only talk about the negative of a mass shooting that happens but they don't talk about well. How many times did a concealed carry person save someone's life? I used to do a series back on my channel way back in the day mm-hmm. where I would cover. It was called "Guns Not in the News," and unfortunately, it just never took off. I wish it would have. Yeah. it's actually a good idea for a podcast type thing. Like, yeah, look, you need to get that information out there that, and people need to know because the media doesn't report it. No. And I would literally find stories just by searching on the internet, and every state out in the United States had some sort of story where somebody helped someone with a gun saved someone else's life yes and the media never reports on it it would be like local news stuff yeah for sure um but it would never like go mainstream or... yeah and i didn't have the kind of influence unfortunately back then to make it mainstream but that's it happens constantly all the time and it's again part of that mentality like you know are you willing if you carry a gun are you willing to use it to defend not just your family and yourself but someone else you know and Depending on the search situation, yeah. If I'm putting myself yeah. in a lot of danger, probably not. You know what I mean? But, like, it's all about self-preservation and preserving your family, number one, 100%. Like, no questions asked. Like, if I'm in a bad situation, I'm getting my family the heck out of there. Like, okay. that's the first choice. And you're getting out and you're getting to safety. That should be your first min- mindset mentality. But there may be a situation where you have no choice but to react, right? Yeah, fight or flight. But sometimes, yeah, you're forced to fight. Sometimes you're forced to fight. So I want to be ready if I am. Yeah. And that's why we train, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, with the whole fight and flight mentality, I remember when I was in high school, there was a school school fight. I was actually in line to get food or something like that, and then it just broke out. And my, I'm not trying trying to say this to talk myself up, but the first instinct I had was to find the fight and go and break it up. I don't know, maybe that was just my, because I'm like, I know these kids, guarantee I know them. I want to go and try to break it up. And it was actually two girls that were fighting. And it got vicious. That's like where there, you there was like freaking strands of hair on the ground. Like yeah. you could see one of the girls was bleeding on her head because she had ripped all the hair out. Oh. It was bad. And so like we were just, it, I was like helping another guy, one of the, oh, like a guy in our high school that played football. He's pretty big. He broke it up and then I was holding one. He was holding the other girl and, and we're like, it's not worth it. Whatever you're fighting about, it's not worth it. And they just were at each other's throat until the, you know, officers arrived or the school resource officers arrived and broke it up for, for real. And, but that, I, I just hope that I have the courage to be able to, cause I mean, when you're in that situation, you won't know until you're there, Nope. you know? And yeah, if self-preservation, if I need to get out of there with my, my daughter and my wife, I'm going to, you know, I, but if, if, if I'm forced to fight, I really hope that I have the courage to do so. And heaven forbid I, that never happens. I don't hope for that ever. There's some guys that I know that hope for that stuff. You know, yeah. I'm like, you don't hope for that stuff. You you should not hope for that stuff because it'll get to, you don't, I don't know. Like, like I said, you don't know how people are going to, going to react. Are they going to mistake you for being the gunman? Are they going to, you know, are they going to mistake you for being the perpetrator? Yep. You know, it's, it's, you got to think critically in those moments and we don't know how we're going to react until we get there. Nope. If we get there. Yeah. You know, and hopefully we never yeah. do. No. And that's moral, you know, statistics say that's likely the case that we'll mm-hmm. never you know what i mean yeah, but for sure 
you never know and why not be prepared you know i think it's a preparation mindset like i have, yeah. I have that mindset in everything in my life like whether it be financially whether it be you know with f- food prep for disasters oh, yeah. water prep just prepping in general like first aid you know like firearms. Do, I, do i have enough you know flashlights in my house in case my power goes out for more than a day yeah like people in texas were like when they had those those uh the ice and freeze warnings mm-hmm. and stuff like that people were dying because they they didn't have enough food and water you know they didn't have the resources they didn't have heavy blankets you know like yeah they don't they thought they could just go to the grocery store and buy a gallon well, of water i mean look at the toilet paper thing that happened oh yeah with COVID. <laughs> how stupid was that and people oh were buying gosh. up and like just giant amounts and like no yeah. one had toilet paper and it was the oh. dumbest thing in the world oh dude yeah when they were starting to announce lockdowns here in utah um i mean i had a three, four month old daughter, you know? And I'm like, I couldn't even go to Costco and get diapers. Yeah. Like how ridiculous is that? Like it was just going to be my regular shopping trip. And then they announced, Oh, Hey, we're going to be closing down next week. And people went nuts. And I'm like, that was a big eye opener for me. Like, what do I have? Like, how do I adapt if I need to? Like, do you, do you buy more diapers just to have backups now? I bet you do. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. I mean, but, but I'm not even going to like trying to be a prepper or anything like that. You know, yeah. it's just like, I just want to be able to take care of my, my daughter in case something happens to her or in case you know, something affects her, which it will. I just want to be prepared enough and, you know, based and then kind of just build from there. But there's some people out there building, you know, bunkers and things like that and, you know, more power to them. But I, for me, I, want to build a bunker. <laughs> I know I'd love, I'd, Ooh, I'd probably like, cool, yeah, yeah, with like a, like a TV generator. I don't know. Yeah. Man cave. Things, things you ground. probably don't need. Yeah. But. No, I, there's actually a podcast I've listened to for a long time called the casual prepper mm-hmm. podcast. They're yeah. actually oh, cool yeah. guys from Utah. Yeah. I've heard of it. Really cool dudes. Um, met him in person at uh, prepper con back in the day Oh yeah. and really cool guys. So I definitely advocate for their podcast because it's, it's, it's like what you're talking about. Like you want to be prepared but not to like the bunker, like building yeah, level like of like 20,000 rounds of ammunition, like, which wouldn't be bad, but <laughs> I mean, but, but like, yeah, but I'm like, I don't have it anywhere near that. Much. Yeah. But I'm saying like, yeah, take care of what you like, focus on your, your nutrition, you know, focus yeah. like, like when you buy freeze dried food, make sure it's something fun, but nutritious. Like you're going to get sick of beans and rice after a week, like yeah. add some, fruity like freeze-dried fruity pebbles or something i don't know like, no you're yeah especially if you have kids you know what i mean that's yeah. a whole nother topic but yeah yeah anyway i do i i like that mindset though it's like casual prepping i always like totally just thought that was f- and they're funny guys mm-hmm. and they, they they just talk about basic stuff like that like oh, yeah. pre- and they you know it's the funniest thing as they've talked about toilet pepper toilet paper preps for mm-hmm. like years and then when this whole thing happened they were like we told you so <laughs> like a lot of people didn't have toilet paper couldn't buy it yeah we told you so it was funny but yeah it's it's whatever man like i just hope that I'm, I'm we're never caught in that situation like i mean even with that earthquake that we had not too long ago or actually it was a year ago now yeah more than a year ago uh that was a big eye opener for a lot of people i mean and you know people predominantly in utah or in salt lake Utah County are predominantly LDS uh, Mormon for those that are are listening that aren't familiar with Utah demographics but I mean we're, they advocate a lot for for you know preparedness emergency preparedness all that stuff I mean it caught even those people off guard and there's people across the country that are less prepared you know I think members of that of the LDS faith are probably the most prepared people I know but you could always do more. No, and they were realizing they, that. that. It's a principle, right? They teach self-reliance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we've had fire dangers recently, right? Because of how hot it's been. It's been a crazy hot oh, summer. Yeah. Very dry. There's drought. I mean, they're telling us not to water much. We live, I live, you can see that mountain right there mm-hmm. at that window. That's yeah. kind of, that started on fire many times in the winter. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it, we don't live that far from it. So if that no. moved down, what do we do? We have a whole neighborhood group because you know part of the um, neighborhood, a lot of the neighborhood is LDS. So um, they we have a neighborhood like not watch but like preparedness group that my neighbor right across the street, just directly out there, he's you know kind of in charge of, and he was just like sending out a text. To everyone is like, hey, he's like, we need to be prepared in case we need to evacuate. You know, make right. sure you have a seventy-two hour kit that you can grab and go get your ho- family out of there. You need to leave things behind and. 
you know, any valuables you want to take with you, you better, they better be easily accessible to grab. And, you know, it's like just having that mindset and preparation, like Utah, yeah, you just, I mean, we don't have hurricanes. We don't have tornadoes because nope. the mountains, we've had a few tornadoes, but very, very rare. rare. Never big ones either. Um, mm-hmm. Our biggest natural disaster threat is Drought. earthquakes and fires. Yeah. And this year's been bad. Luckily, we haven't had one by me, but there's definitely Luckily. fires somewhere burning in Utah because I mean, there's smoke in the air right now. There's smoke everywhere. It's, yeah. I mean, we're affected by people a few hundred miles away in Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada. Yeah. So it kind of makes me ask a question, and, this is, and I'll pose this to the audience. Obviously, no one can answer, but maybe in the comments section on sure. YouTube or yeah. whatever. Like, do you feel like um, people that are have that same mindset of preparedness, it, like, it has a direct correlation, I think, with firearm owners. I think it's part of it. It's like part of that mindset. Like, yeah. I think people that are maybe are anti-gun, are they also not prepared? Are those the same kind of people that yeah. are getting stuck in those situations yeah. where they don't have diapers? Or, and even so, diapers, I don't want to, like, I mean? like, have to lump people into, like, one group. Like, yeah. is somebody prepared, prepared or not because they believe something? But it's a good question. I, I think I, I think there's a correlation. I really... There can be, yeah, for it's sure. Because it goes back to the mindset side of things. Maybe it's the next level, though. Mm-hmm. But maybe they are prepared... Prepared prepared for natural disaster maybe they have 72 hour kits maybe they have food storage and water storage yeah. but maybe they don't yeah. have security one thing that if you watch um warrior poet society do you watch warrior poet society yes John I, love, I love that channel awesome guy former green beret right um super awesome dude just real faithful mm-hmm. like just really look up to him Down a lot to earth guy his one thing he talks about more than anything and mike glover talks about this actually mm-hmm. is because Mike Glover's part of Fieldcraft. He's the owner of Fieldcraft Survival. And Fieldcraft Survival is more about more than just guns. guns. And, it's mm-hmm. about survival in general. And he says security is his number one focus. Why is that? Because that's what he's good at. Yes. That's what he's trained to do. Mm-hmm. Security is number one. And John Lovell talks about that. Like, not bugging out, bugging in, having security. You know, coming over my compound or my house, whatever he calls it. And I got that handled. Maybe you can do something else to contribute to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but he's obviously, he's into prepping and stuff. He has a lot of videos about that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And like how to but, backpack and how mm-hmm. to start a fire, you know, things yeah. like that. For sure. Basic survival skills. Mm-hmm. But one level of those skills is security. And that's where firearms come in, you know, and being trained on those things. So you should not only be trained on firearms, but medical training, medical, knowing how sure. to use basic first aid. And then it's not really training necessarily to like, but there is some, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's skill involved other things for in sure. like preparing. Like there's people that know how to like take those wheat things and make bread out of by hand. And I don't know. Oh do yeah. That. Like a grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Most of my food storage is, is free dries that you just add water to and boil mm-hmm. just cause it's like, I don't Easy. have the skills to sit and make like this wheat. And into I think bread. we live in a day and age where you don't necessarily need that. And I don't yeah. think we'll ever be, hopefully, in a situation where we'll need to grind our own wheat. <laughs> you know what not. I mean? I, but if, if it's there, I mean, there's there's people out, there's resources to learn how to do that. I, it's all on the internet. And I know? think security is a big value, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think of other people that might have medical, more medical expertise than basic first aid, like mm-hmm. actual physicians, doctors, um, people that are like, uh, have trades like plumbers and, um, you know, general like contractors and just people that have some sort of trained nursing like yeah emts they're very valuable to society because they have that specific skill set of training yeah that in a disaster situation is going to be super super valuable oh, yeah. right but i think security is is also part of that equation it's very valuable so if that's what i can bring to my neighborhood preparedness then so be it great you know what yeah I mean? and I'm i think all about it. i think about my training you know, like i i do a lot of digital mapping and things like that. Like I'm pretty good with a, with a paper map if I need to be, but like that's, that's a skill I hope to bring. You mean like Google maps? Yes. Yes. Map quest? Is that all oh, you say? When oh, you say paper oh, yeah, maps, yeah, you yeah, I still quest. use a uh, map quest <laughs> and I've upgraded to Apple maps. Not really. Oh, that's a downgrade. Oof, yeah, it is. Yeah. But like stuff like that, I mean, I've tried to kind of utilize more. I mean, because I've been trained in that, like I can literally orient myself where I am on a map by using my watch, the sun, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't know. I saw, saw, I was at a pawn shop a few days ago and I saw, um, an old like surveying equipment, like a wooden tripod with like a metal, I forgot what they're called. I, I, that's what I haven't been trained on. Um, but it was just interesting. Like people still do that. 
like the, no, not <laughs> yeah, that, it's all total stations now and digital stuff. But it, that's a that's another thing. But yeah. um, I don't mean to get off in the weeds, man. But I I, I appreciate you just your input, yeah. what, dude. What you I, I always like talking with you. I will definitely. I'll definitely have you on again, but, um, for those listening, uh, for those watching on YouTube, um, be sure to check out Tyler, uh, his channel, EDC gear reviews. Uh, you can find him on Instagram, YouTube, where else? I mean, do you, do you, those are your uh, two full 30, full 30, full 30. 30. That's right. Full 30. Com. Yeah, um, check that out. I do have a Facebook page. Don't do a lot on there. I would yeah. say my, my two would be YouTube and, and uh, Instagram, Instagram for sure. Yeah. But now full 30, I'm, I'm planning to do more there. So Go check that out. Um, we appreciate you guys listening today. But uh, before I go, Tyler, I got to give you a, a handshake. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Cool. All right. Well, see ya. Bye.